It's not my fault. I'm always here, ready <laughs> to go. I know you are. It's always, oh, I can't get logged in. Somebody logged me out of Facebook on this stupid iPad. <laughs> it's okay. We don't need it. It's fine. It's fine. I'll see, I'll see some comments up here, right? Yeah. Okay. The one time we actually need to read comments because we don't have any planned <laughs> topics. <laughs> Plan. Okay. I have, a, we have a plan. There's a plan. My lips are bruised. All right. Like I have a mustache. Okay. Welcome to Take It or Leave It, an advice-ish podcast for parents. You can download this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play Music or at podcasttakeitorleaveit.com. Make sure to leave us a five-star oh, review. Wait. What? Tiffany, are you recording? <laughs> no. Oh, shit. All Thanks, right. Dave. Over. Great job. That's All awesome. right. Let's start that over. You did good. Oh. Welcome to Take It or Leave It, an advice-ish podcast for parents. You can download this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play Music. You can find it anywhere that you find any other old podcasts as well. And make sure to leave a five-star review. I'm your host, I'm Mer your host <laughs> Meredith Masony. I'm your host, Meredith Masony. And I'm your host, Tiffany Jenkins. This podcast will discuss all things marriage, motherhood, and everything in between. Please remember, we're not professionals at anything you may actually need. So any advice we give, you can take or leave because it might be crap. Uh, on today's episode, uh, we are just going to be talking about the fact that we are getting ready to go on tour with the My Name Is Not Mom tour. And uh, I thought we might want to discuss sort of our mental state. As we get into that, I oh, no. <laughs> I might I'd be willing to share my mental state as we're going into that and just why we're doing the tour and why it's so important. And um what that brought a therapist in. What what that means for the podcast. For right Basically, now. Basically we're breaking up with you. <laughs> it's not you, it's us. No, it's there's serious. no there's no breaking up, but it is huh? Let's open the show with uh Audrey here. Let's open the show with Audrey before we get in. <laughs> okay, sorry, go. Hi, this is Audrey. I'm a mom of two little girls. And you guys were the first ones I thought to call this morning because there's nobody else that they want to talk to. But if you guys could do some more podcasts about mom fails, about just the darker side of mom fails, where you just yell at your kids and then you feel like, you know, a shitty mom for us today because you worry that they don't love you, even though it's insane. Much now, I sound insane, but like I said, if you guys, could, it would just be nice to have a podcast to listen to where people like me, when we have those moments, just totally don't feel alone. Um, and you guys seem to always have a really good message. If you could just touch on that, I'm sure there's other people out there like me that would that would love to listen to you guys. Um, Anyways, I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks. Thank you, Audrey. Th this one's for you, sister. Yeah. So I definitely have experienced a little bit of a, the darker side lately because my anxiety has gotten the best of me. Um, and I've talked about it on the page. And uh, happy birthday, Crystal. Um, I've talked about it on the page. And I've talked about... Um, I've been as transparent as I possibly could be with where I'm at. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, um, I kind of had uh, a little bit of a breakdown a couple weeks ago. I had a really severe panic attack. Finally. I thought I was dying. Um, I legitimately thought that I was going to have to be taken to the hospital. I told Dave to please take me to the hospital. He said, no, you're not actually dying. Um, so he, he, you know, talked me off the ledge, but it was probably, it probably lasted well into, it felt like hours, but maybe 30 minutes um, that I couldn't get myself under control. Uh, ended up on the ground on the floor crying and basically kicking and screaming like a toddler tantrum. Uh, and I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't think, and I couldn't stop screaming. 
I was literally screaming like, and I have a reason to scream. Like horror movie screams or yeah. were you saying words? No, there were no words. It was just like screaming, mm. like intense screaming. And I couldn't stop it. It's like I didn't even hear the screams coming out and I couldn't stop them. Wow. So it was it was like I thought I thought I have, I have to go to the hospital. I thought on top of that I was having a heart attack mm. because my chest hurt so bad. Um, was and, that due to, do you think, motherhood or everything? Because I know you and you're a go, 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 go person. You literally never stop working. And so when I say finally, I mean for like seven years, you haven't, you've taken a break to pee and that's it. And so yeah. you're, was it just everything? Finally, your brain started malfunctioning and was like short circuiting. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think I had a short circuit and it was after a long week of the kids being gone at sleepaway camp. And so because they were away at sleepaway camp, I took advantage of that time. And I just, I worked about 16 hours a day because normally I can only work, you know, eight or 10 hours a day. Right. Because you're dealing with the kid, you have to stop and deal with the kids, but I didn't have to stop and deal with anybody. So I just worked twice as much. And then my body and my brain just, um, my body and my brain just stopped. Yeah. So um, the next morning, I um, called my doctor's office. And well, actually it wasn't until the Monday cause this happened over a weekend and nobody was open. So, um, I just kind of disconnected and did nothing, uh, over the weekend. And then I called the doctor on Monday and then I called a therapist who I had, I had been previously talking to, but made every excuse about why I was so busy and I couldn't, I couldn't make time to see her to talk things through because I didn't need that. That's what I thought. I didn't need it. Um, cause I was doing everything. So I was like, I don't need to talk, talk about this. I'll be fine. Mm. And so then I finally reconnected with her and she was great. She got me in the following day and I've seen her a couple of times since, and, um, we've just been working through my shit and, you know, she, uh, has made some very good points so far. Uh, I did not think that I was OCD before um meeting with her really uh, i didn't Th that's that, you know i, I did I, not i'm not not making light of this in any way because this is a very serious and, and traumatic thing in our house yeah but she came home and she goes did you know this lady told me that she thinks i'm ocd mm -hmm. and, I, and i was like my initial response was like you laughed are you were we shocked like I was. You're, well, no, it, it's. <laughs> I think it's more of like a. It's always like that. Everybody around you can see all this shit, but when it comes to you seeing your own stuff, it's so hard. And so, like my initial reaction just now was to scoff, but not in like a jerky way, but like a. Well, of course. <laughs> of course you do. Of what? course you do. Yeah. I just didn't I see because my that's not how my so my brain tells me that there's a right and a wrong way to do everything. And there's no sort of gray area with certain things. And so when I feel that it's done the wrong way and it's incorrect and improper, I have to, I have to fix it. And if I can't fix it, my brain has like a spasm. So I didn't look at that as OCD. I looked at that as, well, there's a right and a wrong way. And I'm just, I'll just fix it. And I'll just fix it. I think so much of it is intertwined though. O OCD, anxiety, yeah. depression. I feel like it's so hard to separate those things because I feel like each of them is a result of another thing. You know, my anxiety and obsessive overthinking constantly throws me into depression because my body's just so tired of thinking and just wants to shut off. And right. as far as the OCD, a right and a wrong way, like having to control everything, needing right. everything to be a certain way to line up in your brain to make it right. I feel like, you know, if we all diagnosed, like had our diagnosis, wouldn't that be neat if you could go in the doctor and get blood work and then like a 
receipt prints out of all the different like mental <laughs> illnesses that you have. I feel like we'd all have a bunch that we don't know about, but the most important thing is getting help. And that's what yeah. you did. And I, I applaud you for that because as humans and especially as moms being like, dude, I'm struggling and I don't know what to do. It It's so hard because we don't want to admit we need help. We don't want to admit that we're failing because it makes us feel like we're failing as parents and we're letting our family down. And so I think that there was a divine intervention in your life that smacked you down to the ground and was like, okay, if you're not going to take a break, I'm going to give you one. Yeah. Um, that's exactly what happened. And it was, it was intense. Um, you know, I'm lucky in the sense that uh, to uh, up to this point, at least I haven't had any depressive things. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's all yeah. of my anxiety and this OCD that's intertwined. And I haven't had that feeling of like how I know when you go down that that's when you spiral, I haven't had that, um, that feeling and I'm grateful and thankful for that. And I've been talking to the therapist about that. Cause I worry, I was like, does this mean that I'm going to get depressed now too? Because I'm, mm because I have all of these other things that are swirling around. And she said, I think we would have already seen episodes of that, but you know, she's like, I'm not, I can't see the future either. So I'm keeping it on my radar to pay attention um, to different things as we go through, especially now that I'm medicated, I'm really trying to pay attention to the way I'm feeling and different things because luckily my, both my therapist and my doctor are like, I'll do telehealth with you and we'll get your meds right. And I know you're traveling for the tour. And so if we have to tweak, we'll tweak and we'll figure it out. And so I was very lucky that they both agree. I mean, pandemic, most people are doing the telehealth anyway, right? They don't even want to co come in and see you anymore. Right. But they were great. And they both, you know, she gave me her work cell number and, you know, was like, if, if before the show next week, you have a panic attack or something, you call me immediately. Can I get jump on that call with you? Can, this, <laughs> yeah. for, can we do that? Two for one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tiffany and I'm panicking also. Can I yeah, you're panicking together. <laughs> what does that mean for the show? Right. So <laughs> it's, um, it's, I think it was, I think it had to happen. I knew the, 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 the really scary, well, I don't know if it's scary or not, but I could feel it. I could feel it throughout that week starting. Mm -hmm. I could feel like it was like waves. Yeah. yeah. And I could feel it. And, and my chest would get so tight and I would start to sweat even more than I normally sweat. And I would start to get red and, and it just would, it would just come on in these waves. And, and, you know, and then on Saturday, I just couldn't stop it. There was just no stopping it. It was like a freaking freight train and it was so intense and I'll I'm going to share a really honest moment I don't think I shared this in my live um I don't remember if I did or not because things are kind of blurry but my kids saw it and I was so embarrassed mm. and so ashamed and I felt like the worst you want to talk about the darkest moment of my motherhood journey there it was a couple of weeks ago and I was so ashamed that my kids witnessed my mental breakdown. Um, but after it happened and I collected myself and I was probably in there, like I said, it felt like hours, but I was maybe in there for another 30 or 40 minutes after that. I came out and I made each kid come out of their room because they all ran. You know, they, they ran to their rooms and like shut the door because they didn't know what to do after witnessing this. I made them all come out and I sat them down and I said, I need you to understand that I'm okay. I wasn't okay an hour ago. Um, but dad helped me and I need you to know this has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with my, I'm overwhelmed with work, with stuff, with life. And it got the best of me today, but I all will always love you and I will always take care of you. And now I need to, go to, I have to see a doctor and I have to talk to somebody because I'm not handling things the way I should be handling them. And so I was at least proud of myself for doing that and Listen, not doing it. that just made me a little bit emotional and I wasn't expecting it, but like, I feel like the fact that you sat them down and explained to them that it wasn't their fault is so important because I wish somebody would have done that. 
me when I was little. I felt so guilty all the time for the outbursts of a certain family member. And I always thought it was my fault. I always thought that I was adding to it and contributing to it. And I felt guilty all the time. And so if somebody would have just been like, listen, it's not you, this is something else. It would have changed my entire life, I think. And so the fact that you did that is amazing. And you did exactly the perfect thing. And so I understand feeling guilty about it happening, but you amended it and you made it right. And that is what's most important. Well, thank you. I did. I, I, the first thing I said when I went into the therapist was I admitted to her that this happened in front of the kids. Cause that was probably the worst part for me. And she sa- said the same thing. She's like, I need you to know that you did the right thing in that moment. And, um, it's actually wonderful that you're not, it's not wonderful that your kids saw that, but it's wonderful that your kids are seeing that you've picked yourself up and you're making the right choice to seek help. Yeah. And she said that they all know that it's, it's, important to take care of their mental health and see somebody and know that they can talk about their feelings. And so I felt better about that, but it's still something as a mom, you don't ever want your kids to see you. I mean, my kids have seen me cry. I mean, our kids have seen us have, you know, my husband and I have arguments and things like that, but I have never, I never in a million years would have thought that my kids would see me on the floor having a legitimate, right breakdown in that sense. And so that, that was a lot. And I carried a lot of guilt while I was trying to process that. Um, so, uh, but the, you know, the therapist has been really helpful, uh, so far. And she, uh, basically has me just taking as many baby steps as I can at this moment, especially Mm -hmm. with the tour and with things starting to kick off and us starting to travel again Mm -hmm. and um, being out in the world and doing these things. So she's just reminding me that, um, you know, this is, it took 40 years of behaviors to get to this point. It's not going to happen quickly. Like I can't undo behaviors that I have been, you know, that I've had. Yeah. So, and I didn't even think about it that way. Cause I was like, well, just give me some coping skills. Like how do I cope when I see something is done wrong? She's like, well, first of all, <laughs> you think it's wrong. Right. But people don't. So she's like, we have to, she's like, that's when I, you know, she goes, this is my point. Exactly. Like you have to rewire your brain to think differently. And this isn't going to be easy and it's not going to be a quick fix. Right. And you know me, and I like my quick fix. Uh, Same. <laughs> so I was like, "Well, okay." So um, it's been um, it's been a long couple of weeks, but I finally started to feel uh, more like myself, okay. and I started to feel like if I just worry about today. Mm. And what I got to get done today, I, the weight, the waves are smaller. Like I feel like the waves are smaller right now. And of course I'm starting to get amped up. And I know by Saturday before you guys come in on Sunday, I'll probably be like at my peak ampedness, (laughs) but I'm just trying between now and then to, to be like, okay, I got to remain calm. I understand that the, you know, our first show is right around the corner. I understand that, you know, it's going to be time for this thing that we've been working on for over six months to be real. Yeah. I'm on, uh, everybody has such kind things to say to you. And it's so true. You're definitely not alone. And that's why I went with Audrey's call and she talks about snapping on her kids and feeling like they don't love her. Um, I feel like that happens to me every single day, except it's not that I'm afraid that they don't love me. It's I'm afraid that they think I don't love them. Mm-hmm. Like I think about that all the time. I'm like, not right now. I got to work. Not right now. I got to do this. Not right. Now. And then before you know it, it's bedtime and I've put them to bed and I haven't spent even 20 minutes of quality time with them in the whole entire 24 hours that I've given each day. And so I feel guilty just about every day, but I did sit down and play a board game for one hour with them (laughs) last night. And while I felt like a better mother, I also uh, 
thought I was going to have to go to the hospital because playing board games with a five and six year old is not for the faint of heart. No, it's a nightmare, but yeah. they had a great time, but it's like, stop climbing all over the board. You're knocking all the pieces over. It's not your turn. It's your brother's turn. Please don't toss the die into the other room. Just jiggle it and drop it in front of you. What are you doing? Like it was a test of patience, but I think, you know, mom guilt super real and there's lots of dark stuff when it comes to parenting and your kids, I think are old enough to where they understand and can comprehend you've, uh, you know, what happened, like, holy shit. But they're also old enough to maybe get what could lead to that also. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, especially in those teenage moody years, I'm sure they get it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, everybody, hu- they each hugged me, so you know. And so, Matthias because he's in that real stage where he's a, a, f- a full on teenager, right? Like yeah. full on, like he's bigger than me now. He, mm-hmm. you know, all of these things we were at the grocery store and he, it, you know, was trying to be funny. Right. So we're at the grocery store and I'm going to pick up my prescription for the first time. And he's standing behind me. And thankfully, there was nobody else around us. But the pharmacist hands me by a prescription. And he says, um, uh, yeah, nobody wants to see mom without her crazy pills. And I was like, mm, 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 mm. I know you're te- like he I know he was trying to be funny and test the waters. But I was like, oh, we don't. OK, we don't say that to people. I was mm-hmm. like, you just you know, and he, I think he was try. he was obviously trying to be funny, but I was like, thankfully there was nobody else around here. Yeah. But I was like, and I, when I said, when I told this story to the therapist, she goes, if he only knew how many people are walking around medicated for these things, it's basically like all of us. My husband does that shit to me every time he picks up, like if he picks up my medicine, he jokingly like, sprints through the front door, throws it at me full speed and is like, take them quick. And I'm like, Haha. and then yeah. I kill him. Yeah. And hide his body. So I think, you know, he's like, that was his way of trying to be like, it's okay. Like, it's okay, mom. Like we can joke about this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Say this in public. This is not okay to say in front of people. So he, <laughs> he was like, you know, I'm joking. I'm like, I know you're joking, but if there's somebody behind us, you know what I'm saying? Like you're in public. I was like, dude, like you're, you know. Well, if they're behind you at the pharmacy, in all fairness, they're probably there to get their own. So but, they get it. Yeah, but I was just like, oh, buddy. I was like, ah. That reminds me of a time when I felt really awkward about a parenting situation and thought making a joke would be a good idea. And I got grounded for it. <laughs> I, uh, I probably told you this story, but I accidentally walked in on my mom doing some stuff with her husband and it was eight in the morning and I was just going to get a blow dryer and I thought they were at work. And so I just shut the door and waited in the living room for her to come out and drive me to school. And I was like, I planned out my joke perfectly. And as soon as she came around the corner, I was like, it's a little early in the morning for that. Don't you think Tina? And um, she snapped and grounded me for a month. So I feel like when you're in an awkward situation, you don't know what to do making yeah. jokes. Go to, but she didn't think it was fun. I guess I should have knocked on the door. Yeah. I was like, if anybody, I'm already punished enough. Like right. I have a visual. Of right. You reverse cowgirl. Oh, wow. <laughs> we went there with the position Sorry. and everything, didn't we? Okay. Yes. All right. See what I mean about making jokes in awkward situations? <laughs> But that is what we do. Right. And, and, you know, my, my therapist was like, clearly you use humor as your main coping mechanism. Mm, And, and, you know, like, she's like, and that's good. It's good that you have that outlet. It's good that you have your community. Cause I said, I go live like all the time because I just, it's like my talk therapy and my, it's like my friends are there and they, you know, they help me. And, And she said, it's probably the reason you've been able to manage this for so long is because you had had that outlet. She goes, but you have to pair that with the tools and the other things that you need to do. So I was like, no, I agree. I completely agree with that. So it's, you know, I do feel like it's getting, um, upswing. Yeah. I do feel like it's getting better. I am, um, 
I also was embarrassed to admit that I don't um, really feel joy because she was asking me about, um, you know, am I excited for the tour? Am I excited for these things? Um, you know, you should, you have to be so impressed with what you've created and what you've done because, you know, she asked me about all the different things that I do, the jobs that I have and whatnot. And, uh, I was talking with her about, um, almost, this is earlier this week before we had sold out the first five shows and I <laughs> subtle like, brag. Yeah. I was like, we're, we're almost sold out in Jacksonville. And she's like, God, that must've made you so happy. And I said, no, my first response was got to really work on pushing those tickets in Atlanta. Yeah. Same. You know, so you couldn't take a second to celebrate the success that you had with that show. And I, and I blurted out, well, why would I celebrate it? There's more work to do. Like I, mm. why would I? And she goes, do you not feel joy? And I was like, I, well, I, I said, I, ha I feel joy in certain parts of my, like, I love my kids and spending time with my kids. I love my husband. There are things that we do together and I definitely feel happy and feel joy. But a lot of times when it comes to the work stuff, I don't take the moment to celebrate that because there's always something else to do. There's always more work to be done. And she's like, you, you know, we have to teach you how to enjoy the moments. Okay. We'll share when you find out. Yeah, I know. I laughed. I literally laughed when she said that. And she goes, I know it sounds impossible because of how your brain works. She said, but you can do it. It's so common though. I mean, it has to be so common. I think we live in a world where the majority of people like the cost of living is so high and the money that people make is so low. And so it's like you're on a hamster wheel and you're just trying to get ahead, trying to scrape together enough money to, you know, God forbid, buy yourself something nice or do a family vacation. And I think about that all the time. Like I'm going to be 60 years old, 70, 80 years old. And I'm going to be looking back and being like, wow, I had so many opportunities to be happy and do awesome things. But instead, I took that time to obsess about how to get more, like, instead of just enjoying where I'm at, you know what I mean? Like, with my book and all of that, it's like, well, I got to write another one. I got to make more videos. Cool. My video got a million views. I have to get more than that because, you know, my last video got 7 million and it's never enough. And I think it's so important to pause and acknowledge where you are and what you've done. But I just don't know how to just mm. be okay. And that's why I sleep all the time because I don't want to think, I don't want to obsess about going, going, going. And that's my coping mechanism is disappearing. Yeah. Yeah. We all have our different coping mechanisms, you know, and mine and is some are unhealthy, like the majority of mine, but some of mine are really healthy, you know, and I think eliminating the bad ones is important. And I just go through phases, man. I'll buy planners and I'll buy an Apple watch to track my blood pressure and my workouts. And I'll buy a bunch of really healthy food. And then the food rots, the journal never gets opened and my Apple watch is just dead. And like my dreams, that's what happens. Every three days I get a burst of energy and I'm like, it's a new me. And then on that fourth day, it's like, well, let's just sleep. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. just it's it yeah. Sucks. Well, it is exhausting. Being an adult just sucks. Yeah. And my daughter the other day was like, mommy, I don't like being a kid. And I was like, oh, shut your whore mouth right now. You don't know how good you are. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was like, yeah. are you joking? You can eat all the snacks you want. You can lay around and watch YouTube videos of kids watching YouTube videos all day. You can do anything you want. Yeah. Enjoy it now. Yeah, but that's that's a, that circles back to what you just said, right? We 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 live in a world where nobody's happy with where we're at, where where they're at, and they're chasing more, and even our kids feel that way. Yeah. So, but yeah. it's true. All of it's true, and none of it's easy. And adulting sucks. Um, but we wanted to. It's been the, the podcast has been sporadic. Obviously, there have been things going on, and Tiffany's had her own things on top of that. Um, so she's been just yeah. with you traveling because you've traveled a little bit. So we've had to miss some things. But oh, you're blaming it on me? No, no, no. I'm just saying I I have my you know nervous breakdown. Uh, things it just 
it's been hard. Well, we, we forgot to announce that there wasn't going to be a podcast episode. Yes. And that was my fault. I'll well, no, that. it wasn't just your fault. I have a mouth, mm. but was that mouth do though? But you, t- you said we have to make an announcement and I just forgot. It, so what we're, what we have discussed and there's no time frame on this because we just don't know yet, but, um, I don't know if the proper term is hiatus or just like a quick break or like a, just, we need a hot minute, but we are getting ready to start the tour and with the tour comes traveling and we, uh, you know, talked about it and, um, take it or leave it is just going to take a hot minute while Wait. we get our seat. I mean, is it what? I don't know. I'm just thinking like, is it possible for them to take it or leave it? Like, which would be better to take sporadic random episodes when possible or to have none at all. So, so I was kind of, I was thinking about this mm. and the tour itself is not what's causing this. Right. What, what, what's different about the tour that you guys are doing is that you guys are building it from the ground up. Mm-hmm. It's not with the touring company that did all of the work and then you're just going out to 20. Right. So like your first show announcements are, you didn't get to announce, Hey, we're doing these 20 and have a schedule. Right. Like the dates come in and then in another week, another date comes in. And right. then one. so once we get past that phase, which should only be the next couple of months, if even to where it's okay, we did all of these tests. We, we got all of this started. Now we're going to announce 20 shows, 30 shows, whatever it may be. Now we have a schedule. Then we can start fitting in and working this back okay what i think the issue what makes it difficult and puts more pressure on the two of you is the uncertainty of what's coming in the next eight weeks 10 weeks 12 weeks whatever because right like you get a call you could get a call today that oh we've got three more dates and and then all of a sudden now you have three more dates and that additional pressure instead of just knowing the schedule right right that's been a big part of it for me too, is just not knowing the plan because the plan is unfolding in front of us. Literally. But, literally. And we did, um, we did build this from the ground up. I wish, I wish people, our listeners could see me in these business meetings that we're having <laughs> that we have all the time. It's just, I feel like a toddler who accidentally like sat in front of their mom's computer and joined a business meeting <laughs> who just has no clue what's going on. Is like, can you guys see me? Let's get, like, I'm useless. No. Meredith's been doing so much. That's not true. It is true, Meredith, and you know it. No, but I'm the idiot at the end of the Zoom meeting that still waves. Like it's a like I'm like you have to, and I'm like, why do I do that every time? I don't have to wave. We're not on the street. Like this isn't like it's the weirdest thing. But I just have this compulsion at the end of every Zoom meeting to be like, see you next time. And I do it too, but it's to initiate. This is the end. Yeah, like I'm not going to say bye 20 times. Once my hand goes up, I'm hitting leave meeting. Leave meeting now. Yeah. So I think I think what we what what we need from our listeners right now is just chocolate. Um, yeah, uh, is we are we as things as things unfold and we figure it out and we find our footing. We'll let you know when we'll be back and how things will work. Well, I, I also think it's important for us to say that we are sorry that we missed the last two weeks without giving you notice. Yeah, and we apologize for that. that two it, weeks. I'll take I'll take the blame for that because I, I should have made something happen in there just for an announcement. And and I'm sorry we didn't do that. Is this our first apology video? <laughs> I am the I'm sorry too uh for not letting you know ahead of time that we were not gonna have an episode times two. I didn't know we missed two weeks. I thought it was just one, but either way. Um, oh my gosh, look at my eyes. <laughs> can you see them because of the computer reflection? I look like an alien. Yeah. You if you're just listening. The whole time. 
Yeah. Anyway, um, are we in trouble? I don't think we're in trouble. No. It, we should have planned a proper apology. I oh, first of all, I don't think anything we do is ever planned or yeah. proper. We were supposed to be live at 10. We started yeah. at 1040. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, here. let's just be honest with where we're at. And I think that's what this podcast was about. We're just being honest with where we're at and we're doing our best. And we love you guys and we love this podcast. And we, um, <laughs> the comment, all is forgiven. Thank you. This is one of, this is probably the only hour, not the only hour, but one of her favorite hours of the week. Mine too. Yeah. So I don't, that's why I'm saying I don't, I don't, we don't want this to be some sort of an extended thing. We just, I think we just need to get our footing. Do we? Do we not? I don't know. It's, I mean, I get it. And maybe we shouldn't discuss this here. <laughs> like on the podcast? Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be any different than planning the podcast while we're Correct. on the podcast. Like we've that's done for 126 mm -hmm. episodes. I mean, I don't know. We did one in a car for crying yeah. out loud. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if we're together, we might be able to just. It but might would we be together on a Thursday? That's my question. It, well, it doesn't. It have wouldn't to be. have to be a Thursday. We could do them anytime we're together if we have a phone and then we send a file. But what I'm saying is maybe it's just that Tioli is just you know going to be back to the less structured format again, where it's just us talking and it can't be in front. It can't be, it can't be live in this respect. And maybe it's just a pure podcast where people so, are only listening. Who well, knows? well, part of it too, that I'm going to say, so in the last two weeks, I've been kicking her out of the office because she'll sit at the computer and do whatever and, right. and I'll ask her, what are you doing? And if it's not something that needs to be done, I, I make her leave. And I know you guys are, anxiously awaiting next week and the next couple of weeks. And I'm, I'm just trying to clear her plate a little bit on this side. I understand. That makes sense. Then I won't push it if that's what's up. Well, I just think we, we revisit this in a little bit. We just, just a hot minute. Do you think we need to give a time? Uh, or is it okay to be like, I don't know how it works. Do you think people will be upset or do you think they'll be chill? I know that we have the greatest supporters in the universe. Like that goes without saying, but I mean, realistically from a business standpoint, do you think we need to, or is it okay to leave it open-ended? I, I think we can leave it at there. There's going to be a break coming up. Please do not expect a regular posting of episodes. Okay. We will do our best. To okay. even if it's a 15, 20 minute, hey, we're sitting in a freaking airport in Chicago and it's 10 degrees outside uh. and we decided to record something and here it is. And we put that out. And then as, as we find the groove of what's coming, I like it. We get back to it. And that, okay. you know, you got to remember when we started this four years ago now. No, I haven't even been making videos that long. Uh, was it not four years? I think it was. It's 2021. Three. And we I started, started juggling the Jenkins in 2017. We started, okay. So it was more than two, three years ago. Wow. So we did 18 episodes, took 18 weeks off or more, and then did another 18 episodes. Like we took 18 weeks off. We did, we did 18 episodes, took a break and did 18 episodes, took a break. Did wow, that's right. When there was season. Yeah, right. we used to do season. We did the first three seasons at only 18 mm, episodes. That's and then, true. And then have just, I mean, the thing about it, you've gone nonstop for the last year and a half. That's true. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. So I think leaving it with, we're going to, we're going to do what we can. There's no guarantee of, of something and, and we're going to do our best. And then we'll update everyone as soon as we have, hey, this is what we've got coming forward. And, and we're, we're in a place now where we can start doing this. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we should start like a Facebook group for the podcast so that we can update people. All right. I'm adding to our plates. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay.
Oh, could you see me? No, but I can picture what you did. <laughs> His head literally went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sensed it. Yeah, but it'll. I think. I think it's. I. You know. It's like we talked about, uh, you know, several podcasts ago where you were like, I, I, I worry about stopping because then I think it's all going to fall apart and everyone will leave. Right. When you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's the fear because I have the fear too. like, well, we'll stop doing this and then nobody will come back. And it's not even that for me, surprisingly. No, I just feel I just I'm not familiar with podcasts. I think it goes without saying that you guys plan everything and I just kind of show up and run my mouth. And so I don't know how it works. I don't have any past experience with people stopping and being like, hopefully we'll see you soon and then coming back sometime. I don't know. So I'm just processing it all out loud while live on the podcast. I, I will say podcast audiences are very loyal mm -hmm. and very committed. I, I remember we missed an episode a long time ago and, uh, yeah, it was, it was, people were unhappy that we missed it. Um, but they, they all came back and understood once we explained what happened and, and that was, that was fine. Um, and I think that that's what we're doing now, explaining it and it's where we are. Look, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm having trouble dealing and understanding with everything that's going on and, and everything that's coming up. Right. So I, I, yeah. For the tour. Just with everything here and the tour, everything. And, right. So. I understand. Yeah. So I think we're just going to say thank it. you. Okay. What? No, it sounded like it was going to be a beautiful moment. I didn't want to. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just want to say thank you to everybody because you guys have been there. Uh, you've been here for us. And we appreciate you and we do appreciate you showing up for us and supporting us uh, everywhere because you, you know, you support us on our pages here on the mm -hmm. podcast, you show up in our lives, um, you know, and we appreciate you and we, this isn't, this isn't like it's a goodbye. This is, I'm, we'll see you soon. Okay, good. I'm glad you said that because that's how it felt. No. I don't do well with like rejection and like <laughs> things changing like i will fight it to the nail and no, so this is just we'll see you soon we'll see you soon look i i said it earlier she needs this hour she needs an hour of of you tiffany mm -hmm. and an hour of this group mm -hmm. every week you could have left it with just me i'll mm -hmm. fix you but yeah, I mean, so that's, that's. So yeah. we want to get back to it as soon as yeah. possible. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. It's no, just, she... I, I think, I think my brain just needs to be able to wrap around and it's, it's the OCD in me. I need to wrap around and find some structure because I don't thrive without structure. And so it's been hard building this tour. Yeah. We should mention this to people and I'm just going to say, it might get us in trouble and I hope it doesn't, but, um, we have built this tour from the ground up. And I will just say that in Meredith's career, as long as it's been, um, Dave has been her right-hand man. Dave has been right there with her. Dave has been helping her and guiding her and being the business manager. And this is a project that Dave wasn't necessarily involved in from the beginning. And so he probably feels like an outsider looking in. And Meredith doesn't have him to lean on for information because he's not in the information loop. And so Meredith probably feels up in the air because if you think about it in a way, Dave kind of is your safety blanket when it comes to business stuff. And so with this tour, when you're going to him to feel that comfort and security and stuff, he's like, I don't know anything that's happened. And so then it's like, you're on your own and it's no wonder you feel a little out of sorts and nervous about the future and want to just make sure that your plate is clear enough to deal with whatever things are coming your way independently. And I understand that. Yeah. It's, it's the first time we've been independent of each other in a business because we've started all of this together. And the tour is um, something that's separate that we have been building from the ground up. And it's not, it's not, just none of it's been easy. Um, and well, well, hold on. I don't want to say independent. I, I, 
Well, you jumped in and started helping it, and it, the work made stuff. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm supporting on the back end here for all of this stuff, just in terms of the coordinating for what you're doing and coming up that, that I'm not doing. Well, I think, I think obviously Meredith is independent when it comes to a lot of stuff, but no matter what it is in her business, she can come to you and say, Hey, what do you think of this? This is what's happening. Can I have the information about that? Did you do this? Did you do that? You guys are a team and yes, she's the face and the forefront and like does the creative, but you are the analytical person behind all the crap that has to go on in order for us to do what we do. Yeah. And for the first time in history, you're not in the loop like you are used to be or like you should be. And it's, it has not been easy for many reasons, which, you know, whatever, nothing ever is, but it's, it hasn't been easy. And I know one day the tour will look back and be like, that's why we went through all that adversity trying to get this up off the ground so that we could enjoy this moment right here. But right now it's just kind of felt like we've been in the adversity of it. And I don't know if I'm going to be in trouble for saying that, but it's just the truth. It's been rocky. It's been hard. It's been, there's so many hands in the pot that, what do you say? So many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. That it, it's been incredibly challenging, especially for somebody with a brain like Meredith. I'm able to disassociate and just go with the flow and she's not. Oopsie doodles. Yeah, no, I, I, it's, it is, it's hard for me to process and, you know, and then we're still on top of the tour. We're still running all of our other businesses. So. And we have kids. F, and there's. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's like, we're still running all of the other businesses and Dave is still on top of all of that stuff. And, and then, you know, you have the kids and all of their activities and schedules. And on top of that, it's summer break. And yeah. we Muffling kids to all these damn camps and different things. And it's just, you know. Dave, do you think I misspoke? Do you think I didn't accurately portray something? No, I, I, I don't think so. I, I just, I think that, you know, I, I said from the beginning that, I mean, so even her page, right? Like people always ask, well, why aren't you on the page? Right. And, and I've said it from the beginning, you know, we joke about this and that, and part of it did start off with, with my work, but it's not my page. Right. This is, this is her thing. This is her page. This is about her. This is, um, this is my role is to sit back and support mm -hmm. the three of you got together and started building this. And my role was to sit back and support. So I sit back and support. That's that's it. You know, there's there's nothing else to it. Um, you know, the the three of you have kicked ass in what you've put together, and I think that what the three of you have built is going to be terrific. And my job, my role, is to support Meredith specifically with everything I can here, so that she can go be a part of what you guys are doing. Yeah, and that's it. There, that's, there's no anything else to it. There's no, that's, that's all it is, you know, knowing and understanding my role and doing the part that's necessary. And if that's shuffling kids to camps and if that's doing all the pickups and if that's all the stuff, then yeah, that's what I do. And that's, that's what I will do. And you guys will go out and kick butt on the road. I couldn't do it without my husband. I know you couldn't do it without yours. Well, I mean, if we had to, we probably could, but it wouldn't be nearly as awesome as it is. I would have to just bring my kids with me everywhere. But I, I don't know if I publicly give my husband enough credit, but he, um, he does so much so that I can be in this creative space and do what I love for a living. And I know Dave does the same for you, and I'm very grateful for both yeah. of them. I, yeah, I, I try to say it as often as I can. I can't do what I do without him. It's just, it doesn't work. Um, it does not work. So, so yeah, so it's just, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for being with us. We will see you soon and we love you. And, um, we'll be, we'll be back shortly mm. after this, uh, commercial break. Um, 
several commercials. <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> I don't want to make it worse. I think that was nice. All right, guys. So we'll see you soon. Really soon. Maybe next week. Oh, oh, okay. She. Sorry. All right. We'll <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> Bye, guys. Love you. Bye. Meredith's sweating. Yeah. Sweating. <laughs>